Hey everybody, welcome back to Organic Chemistry. My name is Todd Rothman, and in this video, we're gonna go over section five of stereochemistry, and that is about cycloalkanes. How does stereochemistry apply to cycloalkanes? So let's get started, let's talk about the first thing I wanna discuss is just in general, like, you know, getting comfortable looking at a ring and figuring out if it has chirality. So for example, over here in this first ring system, I have this carbon that might be chiral. I know that the carbon here is not, and that one's not, because they both have two methyls, right? So you can't have the same thing twice. So it really comes down to this red carbon. Is that red carbon chiral? And the answer is no. One way to figure that out is if you can see a plane of symmetry. So if I draw a line like that, notice how everything matches up from top over here to that and the two branch methyl carbon same thing there and then you finally meet at the end over there so everything is reflected and if you run your fingers around this ring you would see that you never found a difference and your fingers would meet so here's what i mean like here's what i usually do and i don't typically draw a plane of symmetry but what i do instead is i say to you like this Right here is a finger, and there's your other finger. Put your fingers there, and notice that they're the same. It's a CH2. Then you move out your finger to here versus there. Same thing, carbon with two methyls. Then you fi you move your fingers meet right there to the next carbon in the ring. You never found a difference. And if you don't find a difference and your fingers meet, that means that the sides are exactly the same. So without it having to draw a plane of symmetry, which is sometimes easy to do, but sometimes it's not, you could run your fingers around the ring and do what I just showed you here, okay? So for that reason, this side of the ring system is not different from this side. And so we're gonna say that this system is not chiral, it's achiral, okay? There's no one chiral in here. Now, look at the opposite here. So in this case, we know that this carbon could be chiral because this is the carbon right here that has possible four different groups. This has two methyls, so it's out, and everybody else has two H's. So I take my finger, and I say, okay, is this different than that? No, they're the same. So so then I move my finger out to here, versus there, and I, oh, there's a difference. So the top one has two methyls, but the bottom does not, right? It's different than this one. So in this case, the top side is different from the bottom because my fingers didn't meet. I found a difference before my fingers met up. And so that means that for this ring carbon, the top side is not the same as the bottom. And so this does have chirality. So this is achiral, but this is chiral. Okay, so what we're gonna do is from this basic idea that I just showed you, we're gonna work through the scenarios of cyclohexane together. Because you really do need to know them all, but I wanted to introduce it to you by just going over an analysis of how we would work. When I say run your fingers around the ring, that's what I mean, okay? This is what I'm referring to, one step at a time. So let's go ahead and talk about the different scenarios for cyclohexane. First off, when you have two groups, and really, like, usually we learn with two groups and then we can add as many as we want, but let's start with the basic. So if you have two groups, it could be either one, two, it could be 1, 3, or it could be 1, 4. Those are the possible scenarios. So for example, if I have a ring and I have A and let's say identical to A like that, that's 1, 2, right? They're 1, 2 away. It doesn't matter if it's branched like this or if it's somewhere else, as long as they're next door neighbors, 1, 2. Now, 1, 3 is like this, where I have A and A. Now, A, A means that they're the same thing, whatever, methyl, it could be BR, it could be CL, as long as it's the same thing, it's identical. And then finally, over here, we have 1,4, so that means that if we have A over here, then A is over there. Now, how many stereocenters do we have for these? Well, here's how it works, it's very simple. When it's 1,2, Okay, I'll just make it a little smaller. When it's 1, 2, you're going to have three isomers, three isomers. What you're going to have is a pair of enantiomers, pair of enantiomers, and one meso form. So, for example, if I draw it out, I would have wedge, wedge, 
for AA. Or I could have, let's say, wedge and back for AA. Or I can have back and wedge for AA. So notice I drew these two are enantiomers. They're complete opposite. If this is top right wedge, top right back, bottom right wedge, bottom right back, um, sorry, back, then wedge. So there you have it. These are enantiomers, right? They're complete opposites. But notice that I only drew this one out once because when it's 1, 2, there's a plane of symmetry. So neither one of these carbons are chiral. So this right here, if you draw a, like a plane of symmetry line like that, you could see where everything above reflects below. So it's completely matched up. So this is a meso form because if you think about it, there is chirality. This carbon's chiral, right? Because look, if you look at this carbon, the top with your finger is not the same as the bottom. They're different, so they would have a difference right away. There's definitely four unique groups around this one and the same here, but it happens to be the exact same thing. So that's why when it's cis, it's chiral. So a pair of enantiomers and one meso form. Maybe I should have done it like that. So meso and a pair of enantiomers. And... Right? Do you see how that worked out? So when you have one, two of the same group, you're going to have a meso and a pair of enantiomers. Now, what about one, three? What would be the stereoisomer for one, three? Well, in this case, you would have the same idea, a, a meso form, I'll do it the same way, and a pair of enantiomers, the same idea, because you're going to have a meso potential. You have a plane of symmetry. So for example, if I draw this out, let me um, make this small as well. I'll just move it to here. Okay, so if you take this right here and draw it out, you're going to have a cis wedge wedge for A, and that's going to have a meso form like this. That's going to be in a meso form. Then you can have it wedge and back, or back and wedge, back and wedge. Right? So those are my possible scenarios. And in this case, when you look at these two, these are mirror images of each other. They're complete opposite. Here, actually, you could see that it's a mirror just looking at it the way it reflects. So this is a mirror image. These are enantiomers. And this is meso because there is a plane of symmetry right through the middle. If you draw a line like that, remember, whenever you draw a plane of symmetry line, whatever is touch, whatever atom touches the line, you ignore it. So this carbon, just ignore, same thing there. Notice that the left side has A wedge, A wedge, H's, H's, right? So there's a plane of symmetry here. And so for that reason, this is a meso form. So when you have connections between 1 and 2 or 1 and 3, you're going to have a pair of enantiomers and a meso form. But what about 1, 4? So with 1, 4, actually, the way this works is that you actually have no chirality. This is achiral. So for 1, 4, it's achiral. I want you to prove that to yourself. This is achiral. So you have no enantiomers ever. No matter what, whether A and A are the same or different things, because look, when you run your finger, you have a CH2, right? Let's, let's run our finger here to here is a CH2 and a CH2. Then you move out, CH2, CH2. Then you move out, your fingers meet, and you never found a difference. So that means that the, this right here is a chiral. There's no difference on those chiral carbons for the left and right side of the ring. These are not chiral. But it turns out that 1,4 does have diastereomer because, of course, it does have cis-trans. So it has cis and trans, right? So you do have stereoisomer. You just don't have chirality. So there's no chirality. It's achiral, but it doesn't mean it doesn't have cis-trans because if this is wedge and this is wedge, that's cis. If this is back and this is wedge, that's trans. So you do have cis-trans diastereomer, but you have you do not have chirality. Up here you do. These two have chirality. Okay, and that's it for this right here. That's how that works here, when they're identical. Now, when it's not identical, in the next, if let's say you have different groups, then one, two, one, three, and one, four, when we do this analysis again, what we find is that for one, two, you're going to have four answers because there is never going to be a meso potential. So for example, if I have, let's say...